Belize was an amazing experience. It was a chance of a lifetime. It was part of my master's work where I was down in the rainforest of Belize. So in the middle of Central America, uh, surrounded by rainforests and Mayan temples and rivers and mosquitoes. And, and I was down there to do a ecological study. So I was studying monkeys that were habituated, meaning very used to humans from an archeological site because they had seen about 10,000 tourists a year to my pristine site that really hadn't seen humans for hundreds of years. And the difference between the two sites was tremendous because I had nice groomed trails around the archeological reserves. And then I had to cut my chair out trails with a machete in the pristine <laughs> section, as well as deal with some snakes and lots of mosquitoes and some other like wild boar and things like that. But um, the monkeys were amazing. Black howler monkeys are a amazing species that live in troops, little family uh, units and being able to watch them, watch their everyday activities, see their family size, see their family activities. And you're watching them from the ground a hundred feet up with binoculars and charting all their activities and things. And hopefully dodging some, some things that are falling down from the trees. But um, it wasn't just the study. It was also being able to work with other researchers because there are other universities uh, using that outpost to do other studies. So, and we all work together. So there are a few uh, scientists that we're doing work with tarantulas and crocodiles. And so uh, Thomas Rainwater, who is a really good friend of mine, um, he was doing croco crocodile studies, tox toxicological studies down there. Uh, and he would help me cut my trails and do some of my studies. And at night we would cruise around and catch crocodiles. So between the monkeys and all the other things going on, it was one of the best experiences of my life. We went out at night, we call it a, um, a midnight tour, basically. We went out on a boat, uh, all of us researchers, my parents and a few other guests that were staying down there. Uh, we went out to do kind of a midnight bird watch so you can see them through the eye shines and things. There's a bunch of birds that do come out at night and some bats and things. But also us researchers in the back, we knew what we were doing, which was for the crocodiles. And so we had spotted a crocodile that Thomas had never caught before and you catch them by the eye shines gleaming on the water. And so we stopped the engines of the boat and, and we're gliding up to it and you have what's called a, um, a little hook basically. And so it's got a little wire on it and a little hook so you go down and you bend down and you grab them around the snout and you pull them up. And when he, Thomas had snagged this and pulled it up, he realized that the crocodile was a lot larger than he thought it was. It was also one he hadn't caught before, which was a great find, but it was also larger than he thought it was going to be. And we also had a boat full of people. So before pulling it fully into the boat, we uh, okayed it that we would continue. And everyone said, fine. We had all the, uh, the visitors kind of move to one side and the five of us wrestled with this, ended up being a 10 foot, 350 pound crocodile and got it in the boat. And when we got it in the boat, you are very primitive down there. And so duct tape is your best friend. So you get it into the boat and you duct tape the snout shut and you duct tape the arms behind it and the feet behind it so it's not going to move. And then someone just sits on top of it until you get back to the lodge to transport it up to um, to do our, get a little blood sample on it, stuff like that. Um, mind you, we're still on a tour with a boat full of people and it's the beginning of the tour. So everyone has got their feet up on the boat and they're staring down at the crocodile and he starts to wiggle, starts to wiggle a little more and he gets his arm out and he gets his other arm out and then he starts to move around and everyone's screaming. And my sister was hilarious with this. She's like, Erebo was like crocodile Dundee. She just dove off her seat, jumped on top of the crocodile. Thomas, like in one foul swoop, tossed her the roll of the, <laughs> the duct tape. She pulls it down, duct tapes his hand shut and just sits there like, nothing, nothing going on here. It's fine. It's all fine. And <laughs> went on about our tour. Everyone is staring at the crocodile and some people are probably praying in the back, but <laughs> it was, it was one of the most exciting and, and, uh, to me funny. Um, but it definitely, definitely experience for them that they always talk about pretty much every Christmas. So.